Good morning, G Tam. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday and happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. <laughs> we love all you mothers we all across the world. We love all you world. mothers, all you natural mothers, and spiritual mothers, and the spiritual mothers, yes. especially the spiritual mothers that have yes. been our spiritual mothers, Kevin yep. and I. And we just thank you for your patience, your love, your kindness, and your example that you've shown us yes. throughout these years. Thank you, thank you. We yeah. also want to just give a shout out to staying connected. Hashtag stay connected. Stay connected. And and staying connected <clears throat> to your family and friends. Oh, that's fine. That's well and fine. But we really want to emphasize staying connected with the Lord. Yes. yes. It's the detrimental. Main <laughs> the main connection. The main connection. Yes. And detrimental, <laughs> especially in these times that we're living in and, and dealing with to to create and develop that relationship with the Lord. He wants it from us. Mm -hmm. So reach out to him, talk to him, read his word because that his word contains everything we need yes. to to be successful, happy and healthy and 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 loving him and him loving us. Amen. Amen. Um his word that that bread of life, we need that that daily bread, you know, uh especially during these times these times of uncertainty, you know, uh, the world is troubled on every side and, and they don't know which way to turn except for the Jesus. The outlook looks horrible, but the uplook looks good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to look up because our Redeemer is drawing nigh. You know, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Now, I don't know about you, but this certainly feels like a drawing to me. People all over the world are trying to find a higher power. They're trying to find something. They just don't know that it's Jesus, but we do. Amen. And they're uncertain about what's happening. So Lift I, I do believe this. <laughs> Somebody somewhere is obviously lifting Jesus up. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> Lift whoop, him whoop. up. <laughs> there's a drawing happening. There's a drawing happening, you know? And so we just want to stay faithful. Uh, we don't want to be uncertain. We want to be certain about uh, uh, our calling and election. The Bible says, make your calling and election short. So as children of God, we don't have to be like the world. We don't have to be nervous and, and, and doubtful and, 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 you know, will this happen? Well, when Jesus says yes, then it'll be yes. The Bible says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. So when the Lord speaks, his word will not return to him void. And best believe if the Lord let this pestilence come, the Lord knows how to lift it. So we don't have to worry. Uh, yes, you know, a, a lot of bad things are happening right now, but the Bible speaks of these things. There's nothing new under the sun, nothing new under the sun, but we have to make our calling and election sure so that when Jesus does appear, we know that we're going home to glory. Because these are glorious times. People call it COVID-19. I call these glorious season. You know, when this thing first happened, I actually told my wife, I was smiling. I said, Lord, do your thing. Because I know who I am and whose I am. Amen. And when you trust in the Lord and everything does not matter, all this stuff is temporary. Best believe it will be lifted one day. And one day soon. Amen. We got to look and we got to love his parent because that's what Jesus is coming for. Right? So we still want to comfort one another though. The Bible says comfort the feeble. We got to do that. We got to exhort. We got to encourage because that's what God called us to do. You know? And uh, so we love you guys. We love the word of God. We love G Tam. We thank we thank God for this this e service. Amen. There's a lot of people that don't even have this opportunity yes. to do what we're doing. And 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 when the pastor asked us to do this, I was like, man, it was early in the morning when I got well, when I got the text, it was about, you know, past my bedtime. But it was an immediate yes, because this is a, a blessed opportunity to 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 connect, to stay connected mm -hmm. with our G Tam fam. And yeah. this is one way that we're gonna do that. So we love you guys. Right? Amen. We All do. Right. We do. We love you. Right. And let us pray. Dear God, in your precious name, in the name of Jesus, once again, we come before you, thanking you, loving you, and appreciating you for who you are. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in your mighty move in this earth. The Bible says the earth is your footstool in the name of Jesus. And yes, we sir. see that today in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, let your will be done in this earth as it already is in heaven. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as the speaker speaks today and teaches us about you, Lord God, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds in the name of Jesus yes. that we may receive of you the, the, the manna from heaven that you have for us in the name of Jesus, Lord God, because you loved us so much, you sacrificed your life for us. 
So we're ready to sacrifice our lives for you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we love you, we bless you, we you and we look forward to your soon return in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We love you, G-Town. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Couldn't have done it without you. Praise the Lord. This is Sister Dwayna Taylor coming to you all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Grateful to be here to share a few songs with you today to encourage your hearts in some way. And at the same time, of course, um, to worship our Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. One of my favorites uh, that I like to share or sing today would be a song that was recorded by gospel recording artist Micah Stampley. And the song is entitled, Take My Life. And that still applies today. Life may seem a little different right now, the way that we're doing life in lieu of what's going on and how we're all impacted or affected in some way. Things are different. We're doing things a little differently now. Yet and still, we can allow our lives to exemplify Christ and we can allow the Holy Spirit to have his marvelous way in our lives. So I hope this song blesses you. I enjoy singing this song and this is a song that reflects the sentiments of my heart. Truly it does. So I hope that you are blessed as well. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Thank you, Jesus. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. That's what I need. Righteousness is what you want for me. I've come to accept this and it's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Take my heart and mold it 
Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, all those stubborn at times. Conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want for me. My God, help us today, Lord. Take my heart, take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, oh God, transform it. Let my thoughts be your thoughts, your thoughts be my thoughts, Lord. Take my will and conform it to yours, oh Lord. Take my heart, oh God, and mold it. Take my, my mind. Transform it. Take my will. Lord, Lord Jesus. To yours. To yours. Oh, Lord. Take my heart. Take my heart. And mold it and fashion it, Lord God. Into the heart that is pleasing to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, going forward, let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, we want to be like you, Lord. We want to be like you. In the name of Jesus, to yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours, to yours. Oh Lord, to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Holiness, holiness is what we long for. Holiness is what we need. Thank you, Jesus. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Thank you, Jesus. We may not be able to assemble in the building, but we are the church triumphant. We go to the building, but we are the church. Now we can go out into the highways and the byways and the hedges. We can compel men to not come to our church's brick and mortar, but come to Christ. I hope you've been blessed so far by the service. And uh, we just want to say God bless pastors uh, Michael and Chantel Miller and all of those that make up the congregation there. Amen. At Grace and Truth. Amen. Apostolic Ministries. Praise God. Again, we appreciate the invitation to come and to share songs today with you, precious people of God. And we hope that you are encouraged and you're edified and you're strengthened in your walk with the Lord, that the Holy Spirit continues to minister to your heart, continues to give you his peace, his peace, comfort, amen, and give us instructions and directions day by day, how he would like for us to live out the plan of God in the earth, using our lives to live out the plan of God in the earth. There's another song I want to share. Uh, It's recorded by uh, some years ago about 
by, excuse me, Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers. And I love this song. I love singing it. And uh, I just thought it was so clever, the writing. Uh, it's entitled These Nails. And um, it's, it's just a powerful song to me. Just speaking of the power in what Christ did for us on Calvary years and years ago. And it's still sustaining us now. Uh, the blood of Jesus yet works, yet cleanses, yet washes, yet covers us. And it's so powerful what took place thousands of years ago on Calvary. And yet these nails, we didn't take the nails. Jesus took the nails for us. But yet we're crucified with Christ. There's a scripture that talks about that. Uh, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh, it's not I that live, nevertheless, not I that live, but Christ that lives uh, in me. Amen. And so, uh, you know, the older saints used to say, God is a keeper. And I find myself being one of the older saints. <laughs> I'm looking at 58 this year. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting on up there. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I know God to be a keeper. Oh, yes, I do. Uh-huh. Uh, he's kept me down through the years, times when I uh, didn't always do what was right, um, didn't always do what was right. Amen. But the Lord gave me a repentant heart and I repented and I turned away from those things that were displeasing to him. Amen. And turned to him. And the Lord has done a marvelous work. And be assured of this, friends, he that had begun what? A good work in us. He's faithful to complete that, what he has begun in us. So no worries. The nails, the nails, the nails, the nails. Tell somebody, tell your neighbor. Neighbor! <laughs> Nobody's in this room but you and I. Hey, these nails, these nails, these nails, they keep holding me. All right, you enjoy this song as well. Thank you, Jesus. Hope you can hear the music. Right after I first received the cross, follow me. Hey. Yes, it did. And right after I first believed the cross, follow me. I know it did. For Christ has nailed my hands. Can you see my hands? And Christ has nailed my feet. And I'm crucified with Christ. And these nails keep holding me. Listen. There are some things that I wanted to do, but I could not do. Mm -mm. Because I love God so much. And there's been some places that my flesh wanted to go and do, but I could not do. Hallelujah. Because I love Him so much for my love. My love for him is so strong. It makes me have integrity. It keeps me even when I think I want to do wrong. For I'm crucified with Christ. And these nails keep holding me. No, it's not I. But it's Christ who lives in me. I'm not my own. Hallelujah. For you see, I've been paid with a price. The Lord purchased my salvation on Calvary's cross. Yours too. Mm -hmm. Yes. He gave his life and it's a precious sacrifice. And I realize I'm crucified. With Christ, and these nails keep holding me, Lord. No.
know it's not I, but it's Christ who lives. He lives in me. Hallelujah. I'm not my own. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're bought with a price. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God. He gave his life. What a sacrifice. Will we crucify him afresh? No. I'm crucified. I'm crucified with Christ. And these nails. These nails. Hallelujah. All these nails. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't see them in the natural, but spiritually speaking, I'm restrained. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of the cross. The power of the cross. The power of the resurrection. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are victorious. Uh, we don't have to give in to fleshly impulses. Even though we don't assemble. Even though the preacher don't know what we're doing behind closed doors. It don't matter. Because we know we have integrity. Because of the blood of Jesus. My God, these nails. Glory, 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 glory. These nails keep holding me. I'm crucified with Christ. <laughs> I feel it in my ikamasha. Hey, glory. They keep holding me. Glory, 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 glory. Mm -hmm. Come on, clap your hand. Come on. Mm. Hello, Grace and Truth. Hello, Grace and Truth family. Pastor Miller, First Lady Miller. The whole GTAM family, how y'all doing? Thank you so much for thinking about me, doing a little bit of worship with you guys. It's an honor and a privilege. I give God all the glory, all the praise. Uh, we're gonna do a little song called Whisper His Name. All right, let's go and worship. Hallelujah. We magnify, we glorify.
come on. Shout out his name and say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. And he'll run to you. Come on. He'll run to you. Yes, he will. While you call him, he's on his way. Good morning and welcome to another uh, eChurch virtual service experience here at GTAM on this wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, I want to, again, just take a moment to thank all of the many friends of GTAM who have so graciously shared their spiritual gifts and their ministry with us and has helped to reveal the atmosphere of praise and worship that we've been able to uh, generate within our respective homes. So thank you so much. We don't take it for granted. Uh, your willingness to serve God and the community of believers uh, in this way is really impactful to us and, and helps us to uh, feel God's presence and to help to uh, again, just add something very special to the service format. So I want to thank all of our many uh, friends of GTAM and even those from the GTAM fam who are serving so faithfully in helping us to put together uh, these service broadcasts and continue the work of God and the ministry of the gospel and the, the sharing of his word and helping us to reach an audience far beyond uh, what we'd be able to reach in uh, our physical Sunday morning service experience. So just again, my, my heartfelt and sincerest uh, gratitude to each and every one of you all. I'd like to, to welcome the GTAM fam. Amen. Uh, looks like the uh, stay-at-home order uh, issued uh, by Governor Inslee is going to be extended for a little while, so we're going to be continuing to do this for a bit. So uh, let's settle in and let's make the most out of this and continue to flourish and thrive in the midst of these circumstances. And to all of our guests, those of you all who may be experiencing uh, this virtual uh, e-church uh, experience from GTAM for the first time, or you're just new uh, to the ministry, I'd like to personally welcome you 
to this format as well and pray that it speaks into your life and ministers to you in, in a very real and tangible way. And that as a result of the time that you are spending with us today, that your life will somehow be better, that your relationship and walk with God will be strengthened uh, and that you will leave this experience better uh, than you were when you started it. So uh, with that, I'm really looking forward to what God has in store for us today. And so we're going to go ahead and get into a word of prayer. But before we do, we're going to continue our GTAM tradition. And uh, GTAM, are you ready for the word? Word up. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. And then again, get right into this thought uh, that has been prepared for us today. Will you pray with us? Dear Lord, we thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness uh, and your continual reminder that your presence is with us. Where can we go uh, and hide from your presence, Lord? No matter where we go, no matter where life finds us, we know that you are a ever-present God. And we thank you for the faithfulness that you continue to demonstrate in being there with us uh, and for us through all of life's many and sundry circumstances. I pray for today's service experience that the words that we are going to share, that they will bring forth life, that Lord, they will speak very clearly and very powerfully to us. They will cause us to pause and reflect. And as a result of those things that you're going to reveal to us through your word, it will inspire and influence every choice and action that we take on this day. So we bless you. We love you, Lord. We look forward to how you are going to evidence and manifest yourselves in our lives uh, through this virtual e-service format. We bless you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we say amen. So before we get into the message today, and we're going to focus primarily on the book of James, looking at the fourth chapter uh, and concentrating on the first 10 verses there. So verses one through 10 in James, the fourth chapter, there's a question uh, that I'm going to ask. And I just want you to take a moment. We're literally going to take a moment to pause and reflect upon this because this will be uh, the center point, kind of at the heart of the message that we're going to share today. And I really want you to just pause and reflect for just a moment. I want you to get a person in mind, someone that you are very close to, someone that you have a very healthy uh, relationship with, and one that I think that you would say you know fairly well. I, I want you to just pause for a minute and I want you to bring that person uh, to the forefront of your mind right now. It could be a, a, a family member, it could be a spouse, maybe a parent or a child or a sibling. Uh, it could be just a very dear friend that you have. It could be a coworker. It might even be um, a supervisor, a boss, a manager uh, at your place of employment. So just find someone uh, that you have a very positive, a very healthy relationship with and, and someone that you'd say that you know fairly well, get them in your mind right now. And as you get them in your mind, I want you to think about why is it that you're so close to them? And what is it that has caused you or allowed you to know them or to get to know them the way you do. Okay. So this will make more sense, I believe, as we get into the message today. And we're just going to give you um, a few seconds here to, to pause and get that person in your mind and to think about those things. And then we're going to get into the message. Okay. So let's just take a moment here. All right, so let's go ahead and, and if you haven't already, uh, open up your Bibles um, with me to the book of James in our New Testament, and we're going to look at chapter number four, uh, and we're going to again look at verses one through ten. Um, verses one through uh, really four and five 
are there primarily to give some insight and backdrop into what's going to be the, the, the focal point of our message, which is going to be in verse number eight. But I want to make sure that I give this some proper context uh, before we delve into uh, really what's at the heart of our message today. So starting at verse number one, James puts forth this uh, question from where come wars and fightings among you? What is the source of all of our strife and conflict that we have with one another? Come they not hints even of your lusts that war in your members? He's, he's suggesting that the cause, the, the, the genesis, the birthplace of a lot of the conflict that we have with one another is inspired or driven from our lusts. Uh, and this is not just in a sensual or sexual way, but lust in its purest form, talking about this insatiable appetite, this, this desire, this taste that we have that can seemingly never be satisfied, that, that no matter how much of it you get, um, it's still never quite enough. And so James is saying, from where come wars and fighting among you? What is the source of our strife and conflict with one another? Do they not come from the insatiable appetites and desires that we have within our members? And it's talking about within our own bodies. Verse number two says, you lust, you have this insatiable appetite, but you have not. You, you have this desire, but you don't have the things that you desire to have. You go through great extremes to get those things. You kill, you desire to have, and cannot obtain. So, so you go through great measure, and, and you go through great expense and toil in an effort to get these things that you have this uh, insatiable desire for, but you still can't obtain them. You fight, you war, you get into these conflicts and into these beefs, but you still don't have them and you don't have them because you ask not, right? Um, and you ask, he says in verse number three, but you still don't get it, right? And, and so it's like you're doing all this fighting and all this conflict, and all this beefing, all this manipulating and, and strategizing and plotting and, and all of that drama, right? Instead of just asking for the things that you desire. And then even when you ask for the things that you desire, you still don't get them. You ask and you receive not. And the reason why when you do ask, you don't get them is because you ask, he says, amiss, right? Uh, and that term amiss simply means that you ask in error. The way I like to think about amiss is just that, you missed. You may have asked, but you asked amiss. You asked in error. And the context of that, he goes on to describe the reason why it's a miss, the reason why it's off base or off track is that you're asking for it only that you may consume it upon your lust. So your motivation for asking for those things is, again, just trying to satisfy or fulfill this insatiable appetite that you have, right? And, and I want to pause there for just a minute because many have misconstrued this particular passage of scripture and have used it um, erroneously uh, to go to God and uh, treat God like a, 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 a Latin or a genie. That they can just come and rub the side of the lamp and all of a sudden God is supposed to pop out and say, your wish is my command. What three desires do you have? And, and it doesn't work that way. And that is not the context at all in which this scripture is being shared. It's, it's saying, hey, the reason why you don't have the things that you long for is one, is because you're not asking for them. You're trying to manipulate to get them. Um, but even when you do ask for them, you know, you have not because you ask not. And again, again, the context of that is that you have not because you haven't asked, you've manipulated, right? But even when you do ask, you still don't get it 
because you're asking in error. The reason why you're asking is just so that you can try to satiate or satisfy uh, this insatiable appetite that you have. In other words, the reason why in some cases God is not allowing you to get some of the things that you've been longing and asking for is only because it's going to continue to fulfill and satisfy an appetite that you have that perhaps you don't need to have and doesn't matter how much of it you get, it's still not going to satisfy you, amen? So he goes on in verse number four. He says, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And, and I want to just take a moment to concentrate on that term enmity, right? Enmity is a vile hatred and hostility. When you have enmity towards someone, it's, it's this really deeply rooted, deeply seated hatred. It's, it's, it's a vile, it's a, a passionate hatred that you have for someone that creates this hostility. You become hostile towards that particular individual. And, and the antonym or the opposite of enmity is agape, right? Which we know is the highest form of love and is always used in context or in um, a combination with God. So, so enmity is the opposite of God's love. Enmity is this vile, just deeply rooted, impassioned hatred and hostility towards someone, right? And as a result of enmity are enemies, right? They, they come from the same uh, root word, enmity and enemy. As a result of the hostility and the vile hatred that I have towards you, I have now turned you into an enemy, someone that we are on the opposite sides with and that we are uh, in conflict with, right? And this is beyond just like a competitive conflict. This is a, a combative type of conflict, amen? And so in verse number four, he says, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity, it's hostility, right? It's a vile hatred with God. So, so those things that we lust for, those things that we long for, those things that we are manipulating and conniving and, and trying to uh, 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 create hostility towards uh, obtaining in our lives puts us in a position where we are at enmity. We It creates hostility between us and God. Now, I want that to sink in for a minute uh, as James concludes that verse by saying, therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is uh, the enemy of God. And, and, and so I, I, I want this to sink in with you for just a moment. The more we pursue after those things that are uh, in a vain attempt to satisfy the appetite, the passions, the desires uh, that dwell within our humanity, the, the more we make that a priority, in our lives, and, and that is what consumes our thoughts and our efforts and our drive, the more we uh, uh, focus in and pursue those things, the more at odds we are going to be with God because those things put us at enmity. It creates a hostility uh, between us and God, right? Uh, the scripture goes on in another place and says, you cannot serve God and mammon, right? And, and many have misunderstood that term mammon to, to, to mean man, but it doesn't mean man. That term mammon means things, right? It, it, it means uh, the, the substantive things of, of life in the world. So in other words, we cannot pursue after worldly possessions and gain. That cannot be at the pinnacle or forefront of our pursuits and at the same time have at the forefront and the pinnacle of our pursuits God and the things of God, because the things of the world and the things of God are at enmity. They're enemies with one another. They're they're on hostile ends of the spectrum. Amen. So so I just want that to sit in 
or sink in for just a moment with you uh, before we continue on, because it's important for us to understand that. And, and that's why some have really struggled with the faith, right? Because they want to pursue after the things of the world while at the same time pursue the things of God and they don't work together. You, you, you can't pursue them at the same time. You cannot have two things that are the most important thing in your life, right? I mean, when you think about it practically, you, you cannot have two things that are the most important thing in your life. One has to take preeminence over the other, amen? And when there is anything other than God that is in that position of preeminence in your life, it creates hostility towards God, amen? And so again, I just want that to think in, uh, sink in rather, as we go to verse number five. He says, do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. So, so in other words, I, I want you to think about this, right? In other words, it should be no secret that, that, that the spirit that dwelleth in us, right? And this is talking about our human spirit. This is talking about our disposition. And, and I would even say that it's our predisposition, right? We are predisposed to certain things. We, we are predisposed to certain Pursuits. There are some things that are just naturally instinctive towards us, right? And, and that's what James is talking about here in the scripture when he says the spirit that dwelleth in us, our predisposition, right? Our, our tendency, our, our habit, our, our instinct, right? The spirit that dwelleth in us right, is predisposed to lusteth to envy. So in other words, it's predisposed to want to desire certain things, right? And, and especially when we see others with those things, right? There's, there's a, a, another place in scripture that says that all that is in the world, right, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, right? These, these three things that drive human behavior, the lust of the flesh, talking about those things that we desire, those things that we want, those things that are sensual. And when we talk about sensual, again, I'm talking about it in its purest context, going beyond just a sexual form of sensuality, but those things that appeal to our five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing, right? So, so they're all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, those things that deal with our sensual responses, right? The lust of the eye, those things that we see, especially those things that we see others either have or that we see others doing, right? Or our pride, right? Our egos and things of that nature. Those are the tendencies of our humanity and those things, if we do not corral them, if we do not harness and manage those things, will put us in a position of enmity with God. It's no excuse to say, well, since those things come naturally, I'm going to do what comes naturally. There's, we talked about this in a previous message, right? That, that we have to grow and mature and develop beyond our base human nature. Even though that may be our base human nature, we need to understand the impact that our base human nature has on our relationship with God. When we live, function, operate, are driven by, motivated by, inspired by, influenced by, put whatever uh, adverb you want on that, right? It's going to put us in a position where we are at odds and are hostile towards God. Selah. Let's go on to verse number six, which is where some encouragement comes in. James wants to bring about some encouragement. He says, though this may be what dwells in us naturally, but he giveth more grace, but God gives to us more grace. And, and all of us right now are living in this dispensation, in this period of grace, right? This, this time in human history where God is giving us space 
to repent, where God is giving us time and opportunity to, to get some things right, for us to come to the realization of the error of our way so that we can then intentionally respond and reposition ourselves to where God desires us to be and, and, and position us to where our heart's desire is as well. Understanding, and Paul uh, alluded to this tremendously in Romans, the seventh chapter. He says, listen, the things that I want to do, that ain't what I'm doing. The things that I don't want to do, those are the things I'm doing, right? Uh, he goes on. He says, listen, the spirit is willing. There, there's a desire and a want to. I, there, there's a place and a way that I want to be. There's a mindset and an approach to life that I long for, that I'm pursuing, and that I desire. The spirit is willing. My flesh, though, is weak. He goes on and says, I find then this law, that when I would do good, guess what? Evil is is present with me, all right? And so again, it's further acknowledgement and recognition that, that, that yes, sometimes I do have a desire uh, to be with God and make God the preeminent influence in my life, but that is at odds and at war with the law of my members, the law of my body. So, so, so I have to then be intentional. I can't always do follow my gut and my instincts because they will often lead me to doing those things that are going to satisfy my base human instincts. So, so what then do I need to rely on? And that is the leading, the influence, uh, and the guidance of God's spirit. When I am filled with the Holy Ghost, I have something now that can influence and drive my choices and my desires that is more powerful than my flesh, something that can overcome the will and the desire of my members. Amen. And so we thank God that we live during this period in time and dispensation of grace that has given us access to his spirit that can lead us and guide us into all truth. So again, continuing verse number six, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. So we said a little bit earlier, all that is in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, right? And the pride of life, right? When we walk and live in pride, it's as if we are not willing to admit that we have some flaw, that we have some weakness, amen? And, and God will resist the proud. Now, now something for us to keep in mind, right? A, a question that I get posed with quite often is why, you know, if there is a God, is there so much evil and destruction in the world? And it's simply uh, because of this. God is not going to force or impose his will upon humanity. The greatest thing that God has given to us is the power to choose, amen? And, and God is not gonna force his will, God is not gonna force his love, God is not gonna force his desires upon you. He's gonna give all of us the power to choose, but then we are going to be held accountable for the choices that we make. Sadly, sometimes people make choices that adversely impact others. And when that happens, God is not going to step in and, and stop that will from being exercised. But what God will do is come in and help us through the impact and the influence of other people's actions uh, and the exercising of their choices upon us. In this time of grace, through his Holy Spirit, he will comfort us, he will strengthen us. He will give us wisdom. Amen. He will open up other doors of opportunity for us to gain many times what was stolen from us by others. Amen. And so God resists the proud. For those who walk around 
uh, filled with pride, uh, driven by their egos, unwilling to admit when they're wrong, when they have a flaw, when they have some kind of weakness. Often that's driven by a um, lack of, of confidence, driven by some sense of insecurity that I cannot admit my weaknesses. I cannot admit my failures. Amen. Well, just know that if that's the case, God is going to resist you. All the things that God has prepared and made available to you, um, you're going to find difficult to take advantage of because of your pride. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. For, for those who will humble themselves before the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. He will elevate you. He will raise you up in due time. So God resists the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Verse number seven, he says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And, and, and I want you to, to key in on this because it's something that you have to do. You have to submit yourself, therefore, unto God, right? And, and I, I want to, so many times, um, we say, you know, God, take this from me. God, remove this from me. We, we want God to do for us what, frankly, we need to take the steps to start to do for ourselves, right? It's, it, it, this is principle um, that, that you'll see, this thread of truth that runs throughout Scripture, that while God may have something for us, he is going to require us to engage and for us to participate in order for us to see it realized, right? So, so think back even all the way to the Old Testament when uh, he was bringing the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and he was going to bring them into a land of promise in Canaan land. He said, I've given you the land, now go and possess it. There's giants in the land. I've given it to you, yes, but you're still going to have to do some things to go in and possess, to fight, to occupy the land. God's not going to just pick you up and place you in there. You've got to have some sweat equity, as it were, into the blessings and promises of God. So even though he may have something for you, there's still work and effort that you're going to have to do, right? He says, after having done all to stand, stand therefore, which your learns going about with truth and so on and so forth, right? So there's something that we're going to always have to do. We're going to have to take the first step and then God will meet us along the way. And in this context, he says, listen, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's what you need to do. You need to submit yourself to God. You need to resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. You can't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to continue uh, down this path and, and God is just going to take this away from me. Again, he's not some genie in a bottle, Aladdin, that you can just rub on the side of the lamp, pop out, your wish is my command. What three wishes do you want? I want you to take this sin away from me. No, I'm not going to take this sin away from you. You need to walk away. You need to, Hebrew says, lay aside every weight in the sin, right? Um, and so there are some things that we are going to have to do. We're going to have to submit ourselves to God. We're going to have to resist the devil. And where, again, I want to spend a couple of extra minutes on is in verse number eight, where he says, listen, draw nigh to God. And that term nigh means near. It means to draw close to. And so draw nigh, draw near, draw close to God. You take the initiative. You take the first steps to get close to God, to draw near to him. You, you do those things that are necessary to put yourself in a position and posture to be close to God. You come and sit at his feet. You come and lay your head on his bosom. He has invited you. He has welcomed you. He told you that there's a position and a place for you. Now you draw nigh unto him right? And when you take those steps, when you put forth that initiative and that effort, when, when you do what's necessary to take God and reposition him to a place of preeminence in your life, when you take those steps to draw near, close, nigh unto God, you notice something will happen that he will draw nigh to you. 
And again, this goes back to that question uh, that I asked earlier uh, in the service broadcast. I want you to think about an individual. Think about a person that you know very well and that you're close to. And what is it about them that has caused you to draw close to them, right? How is it that, that, that you all are so close? It's because likely, see if any of this resonates with you, because you all got to know each other, because you all hung out with one another, because you all spent time with one another. Perhaps it's because you all went through some things and they were there for you or you were there for them and you helped them get through some things or they helped you get through some things. Is, is, it, is any of this resonating for you? Uh, even think about it in a work context, right? How many of us can say that we know our bosses really well? We know what they want. Uh, we know what they're looking for. Uh, we can anticipate what they're going to ask for us. We know their tendencies uh, and things of that nature. And how is this? Because you've worked for them for quite some time, because you all have had meetings, because you've asked questions. There's been performance reviews or they've given you feedback and you've given them feedback, right? Um, and, and so it's it's through this dialogue, it's through this back and forth, it's through this engagement that you've had with them that you've gotten to know one another. And if it's a good, positive, healthy relationship, there's a mutual respect, right? And again, even thinking in terms of this work or professional environment, you know what your boss wants. So, so you know exactly how to um, do things that are going to, to, to satisfy and meet their needs and their desires, right? They know you, they know your strengths, they know your weaknesses. And so they ask you to do tasks. They ask you to, to work on special projects that are, you know, catered towards your own particular strengths. Sometimes they may ask you to do something because it's a development opportunity, right? You're not very good at it. They know that here comes an opportunity for you to work on something that is going to strengthen that skill all because they know you, right? And, and so when it comes to God, it's the same principle at work, right? When we do those things to draw closer to God, it actually puts God in a position where he can get closer to us. Because again, he is not going to impose or force his will upon you. He is going to let you know, hey, listen, I'm open to you getting as close to me as you want, but you're going to have to take the first step. You're going to have to initiate the relationship, right? If you want to come close to me, then I tell you what, you take a step, I'll take a step. And those things that cause us to draw close to God are in many ways those same things that cause us to draw close to one another, to another person, right? We spend time with them. We dialogue with them. We go through some things and they're there for us. We learn about them, right? And God has left his word to us so that we can get to know about him. God has uh, left us the stories, the witnesses, and the testimonies of others for us to learn of him. God will use our experiences to learn of him. He makes himself available for meetings and dialogues through time of prayer, through times of, of meditation and reflection, right? And the more we get to know God, then we know more of what he likes and what he wants and what will cause him to, to, to say, well done, that's a good job, right? And so the more that we do those things, the closer we get to God and the stronger the relationship we have with him. And that's what I want to compel within us today is for us to draw closer to God, for us to have stronger, healthier relationships with God. His Holy Spirit, he has made available to us, but he's not going to impose it or force it upon us. If we simply ask him, he will give it to us because we are not asking in error. We're not asking for the Holy Ghost so that we can walk around like the seven sons of Siva and, and say, hey, I want to have this mystical power to be able to do the things that my pride and lust saw other people doing. No, 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 right? 
Um, we're asking from a pure heart, from a pure place. Lord, give me this water. I want to have that kind of relationship and that kind of connection with you. If there's something that will help to bond us and make us closer, I want that. Amen. And so, yes, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit. And, and you'll begin to notice your appetites and your desires will begin to, to, to morph. They'll begin to change. All of a sudden, the things that are most important to you won't be all the things of the world that have caused you to be hostile towards the things of God. Now, all of a sudden, when God says, what do you want? I'll give you whatever in the world you want, you can respond more like Solomon and say, hey, you know what? I, all I want is wisdom so that I can rightly judge your people. And God's response will be because you asked for something so noble and so altruistic uh, like wisdom, not only am I going to grant you that petition because that's what I would want you to have too. I'm going to give you that wisdom, but guess what? You're going to have tons of riches and everything else. But guess what Solomon appreciated the most? It wasn't the riches. It wasn't the wealth. It wasn't the influence. It was the wisdom because that was what was preeminent in his life. I want more than anything else, those things that are going to bind my relationship with you, God. And when we ask in that way and we ask of those things, we are now no longer asking a miss or asking an error, right? And God is happy to grant us that petition. God is happy to grant us that request because it's in alignment with his will. The only way that we can uh, pray and ask for those things that are in alignment with God's will is that we have to get to know God and know what his will is. And so when we have find when we have found ourselves pursuing and chasing after all these things and and getting caught up in all kinds of beef and drama and all that kind of good stuff and we're still not satisfied no matter what you get no matter how much you have it's still not enough when you find yourself in that situation, you need to stop and take inventory, right, and reflect and be grateful for the grace period that we're living in, right? Humble ourselves, submit ourselves to God, resist the desire to pursue and chase after those things, do what's necessary to put God in a position of preeminence in our lives so that we can draw close to him and he will draw close to us. And, and as you draw closer to God, you'll begin to realize there's some things in my life that um, I don't want to be associated with my relationship with God. And so we'll go through this cleansing and purification effort, right? And he goes on to verse number eight, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, so cleanse yourself of, of those activities and those behaviors that are outside of the will of God, right? Because the sin is simply to miss the mark. When you come to realize I've missed the mark on some things and that has uh, defiled me in some ways, let me go ahead and wash my hands and cleanse myself of that. Let me purify my heart, uh, those of us are, that are double-minded, right? So that are torn and conflicted. I want to serve God, but I want all these other things. Purify your heart. That, that conflict is being driven from the appetite and the desires of your heart. Go in and purify your heart, and you will find that that sense of double-mindedness will begin to fade. He goes on and says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness, right? And, and these things are here not because he wants you to be in a state of despair. These things are here to say, hey, you need to recognize where you have been and what where you have been has done in terms of creating this hostility between you and God. And you should mourn over that. Those things that once used to cause you to laugh you now realize that those things have put me at odds with God. Those things aren't things that I should be laughing at. Those aren't things that God is laughing at. So, so be afflicted and mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness, right? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Amen. When you have... Uh, at the pinnacle of your desires, I want to draw closer to God. I want to put myself in a position and posture myself so that we can be really tight. I, I want to be a friend of God. I want God to say, that's my friend. 
I want God to say that is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I want that close, intimate relationship with God. And if I and, and, and recognizing now that I need to humble myself in order for him to elevate me into that position, right? I'm going to come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly, yes, but humble. Um, I'm not going to just come barging in. I'm going to come boldly, right, as if I belong there, but I'm going to come humbly as well, not thinking that, that I deserve to be in that position, understanding that God has to declare me righteous and bring me in that position. So, so again, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to resist the devil. I'm going to recognize that some of the things that I drew pleasure from, some of the things that I enjoyed, some of the things that I laughed at before, the light bulb has gone out and I realize that that has created hostility and, and has demonstrated this vile hatred towards God. And that's not what I want. I, I, I want to repent. I need to, to change and do some things differently. I need to wash my hands. I need to cleanse myself. If I've never been baptized in Jesus' name before, I need to get into the waters of baptism so that I can be cleansed from the inside out. Amen. I want to purify my heart, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Blot out my transgressions was David's cry in the 51st Psalm when he came to the realization that those heinous acts that he committed, though they were perpetrated against another human being, they were really an offense to God. And he's like, hey, cleanse me, purify me of this, forgive me, help me get it right. And thank God we live in this time and period uh, and season of grace where God has afforded us that very opportunity. So as we close out our message this morning, I want to close out and praying with you. I My heart desire is that we will want, that, that it will be our intent, our desire to draw close to God, have that very close, personal, intimate relationship with him and and that we will do those things that are necessary to put us in that position and in that posture and that as we uh, do those things to reflect on where we're at in our life and in our walk with God where we find that there are some things that we need to do differently that we will be courageous enough disciplined enough to do it amen join me in this prayer Lord, this morning, I'm just so thankful that you love us enough to speak truth into our hearts and into our ears and that with our minds, we can understand. Lord, thank you for giving us access and the opportunity to have very close, personal, intimate relationships with you. You have opened up the door for us, Lord, now we have to do those things that are necessary to walk through them. I pray, Lord, that for each and every one that is hearing this message today, that it has stimulated, it has stirred something, sparked something within them, within us, Lord, to want to draw close to you. I pray that as we take inventory over our lives and where uh, we are today, that when we recognize that there's some distance between us, that we would wash our hands, that we would clean ourselves, that we would purify our hearts and become single-minded in our focus towards making you the preeminent priority in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this time of grace that we live in. And I pray that we will not frustrate your grace, but that we will take full advantage of it, that we will redeem the time and that we will do those things that are necessary to, to draw close to you. And that as we draw close to you, Lord, you will in turn draw close to us. We love you and we thank you for the tremendous love that you have put on display and have manifested towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And again, I pray that anyone that has been touched by this message, if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name and you desire and want to take that step of purification, please reach out to us through the admin at apostoliddoctrine.com email address. 
There's a link to that on the homepage of our website. You can also submit a prayer request to us and we will respond to that prayer request. Have someone call you, uh, pray with you, pray for you. Um, and again, we can make arrangements to have you baptized. We just want to see you have as close and as intimate of a relationship with God as you possibly can in any way that we can service you in ministry uh, to help bring that about. Uh, we are happy to do that. So please reach out to us through, uh, again, our email address, uh, through that prayer request, and we will have someone uh, touch bases with you and partner with you uh, in ministry to help you continue to further that walk and relationship with God, okay? All right, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us for this service today. Amen. Well, awesome word, uh, Mr. Miller, once again. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank God for his empowerment. Um, through his Holy Spirit for us to be able to uh, live right and and uh, he's just and he's chosen us that's what came to me he, he chooses us mm -hmm. and he's just waiting for us to choose him right you know and right. I thought about the uh, basketball you know when you have these coaches that are doing their picks mm -hmm. and how that must feel to the players to to be desired you mm -hmm. know to be on their team mm -hmm. so that's what came to me, uh, how God feels with us when we choose him. And um, and so, yes, thank you for the word. Rich, rich, rich. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Yes. <laughs> happy Mother's Day to yes. everyone uh, that's a mother, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, may God just, you know, bless you throughout the day and may he send, send comfort to those that uh, have lost their mothers. Uh, we, our prayers are with you. Um, and one little reminder uh, to go click on uh, Kingdom Kids on our website, www.apostolicdoctrine.com, so that your kids can uh, participate in their virtual uh, learning and be connected with all of God's Kingdom Kids. All right. Good. That's it. <laughs> 12 awesome. o'clock. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Pacific. Time. Yes, for those that time. may be in a different time zone, yes. 12 o'clock Pacific. Amen. We remembered that time. <laughs> yes. Yes, we did. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, again, I can't thank you all enough for uh, tuning in to the broadcast today. And again, pray that the totality of everything, the praise and worship, the opening uh, prayer and introduction, the message has really spoken and ministered to you in some very real and tangible way. And uh, uh, appreciate everyone's continued faithfulness uh, that are helping to put these broadcasts um, uh, together, that are doing the editing and publishing of it, posting it to our various uh, platforms. And, you know, a, a small team has come together in a very short amount of time and have put in a tremendous amount of effort and work uh, to make this happen. And, and we so appreciate you all. Uh, very, very much, uh, and uh, hope that you understand that this is ministry. The work that you're doing, though it may not be on this side of the camera, uh, is important in presenting the gospel. And I think many times that gets lost on people. They're like, well, I don't see what I do as being very impactful, but really anything that anyone does in support of you know ministry is is just that it's ministry it's the work of the gospel so when we were you know having services in our church facility those that are maintaining the facilities and the grounds cleaning it and and repairing yes. it and you know serving as hospitality all of that's ministry because it's helping uh, bring the gospel to people those that you know in this uh, virtual uh, technology uh, platform of ministry those that are you know helping to edit and produce yes. uh, that's ministry those that are posting on our social media and, and websites, that's ministry. Those who are, you know, helping to uh, manage the, the finances, all, all of that is ministry. We, we have people that are still going and, and looking after our physical place of worship. Um, individuals going by there almost every day, you know, cleaning the grounds and, and things of that nature and just making sure that it's safe and secure. Um, all of that, that all of that is ministry. So I, I just want to thank you all yes. and, and pray that you see it 
for what it is, your work and your effort, your lending, your time, your lending, uh, your talents, your gifts, your skills, and your abilities to the work of the ministry. And once again, thank you all for lending your financial support uh, to the work of the ministry as as well. Um, this week, we got a, a very sizable uh, contribution from uh, an individual that uh, just really uh, is going to continue to help us. And it's going to take efforts uh, just like that. Individuals, everyone doing your part. And, um, you know, if everyone does their part, then it's just like drawing nigh to God. If we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. If we do our part, then God will do his. And we certainly have uh, and it's affording us the opportunity to continue to do ministry, uh, to, to bring it to you in a better way and to impact our community, uh, which we hope to share more with you uh, on how we're doing that in future weeks. OK, so God bless you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Mother's Day afternoon. Uh, those of you all that have your mothers with you, love on them in some way, um, even in this uh, distanced uh, environment. Find a way to love on your mother, express your love to them. For those, like my wife said earlier, uh, who have lost their mothers, your mother's not here, uh, our hearts uh, go out to you. We're praying for God's comfort to be there with you as well. And uh, just a thought, you know, you may need to adopt someone uh, to serve as a, a spiritual mother uh, for you that you can dote on and, and love in the absence of your natural mother, okay? So God bless you all. Have a great rest of your day, okay? We'll see you next time.